Hello students, welcome you all to my YouTube channel. As you know, this channel is for ICC Physics. And today I am with you with an important topic of class 10, which is refraction of light. In my first video, I have discussed about the fundamental concept of refraction and when a ray of light passing through a rectangular glass block, there are different changes we will get in the rays we got. Today, we will take a triangular prism and when a ray of light will pass through the triangular prism, what are the changes will occur? We will read about that. It is a part 2 and to get more updates of physics, you like my video, subscribe my channel and give your valuable comment. Let's start today's topic, refraction of light to a prism. First thing to know, what is a prism? Prism is a three-dimensional object. Prism is uh, surrounded by five surfaces. Here you can see one surface is triangular and the back part also triangular. Means two surfaces or two faces are triangular. And here this face and the down, um, back side of it and the base. Means th these three are rectangular. Means a uh, region, the three-dimensional object which is made of three rectangular surface and two triangular faces. Means it is having five faces, and the angle formed between these two faces or these two lines here, the angle form is called the angle of prism. This angle, this angle is called the angle of prism, and depending upon the prism, this angle again different, and depending upon the face of this triangle, the name of prism also different. If this triangle, as we know, the triangle are different type, equilateral triangle, as well as triangle, right angle triangle, right angle, as well as triangle, scalene triangle. So accordingly, prism also having different type, right angle prism, right angle, as well as prism, equilateral prism, means depending upon the shape of this triangle, prism name is here. We'll discuss more aspects of this prism. First thing, when we are reading about the prism, a ray of light will hit to the prism and where it, it goes or what are the changes will occur, how much degree it will deviate. So that all, to know about all the aspects of this prism, we have to take a two-dimensional triangular face of this prism. I have to take here a triangular face. First thing you will notice here, A, B, C, this triangle is the face of prism. And a ray of light O, P, incident on the first phase AB. Now, light is going from AR to glass because it is made of glass or the prism is made of glass or glass prism. When a ray of light will go from rare to denser medium or AR to glass, all its speed decrease. So, this ray now will come towards the normal and here we are having the normal PN as the normal. So, the incident ray O P or the incident which will uh, hit the prism, touch the prism, incident on the prism at the point P now is moving towards the normal and when it comes to the Q part or the second phase or Q point, now it is going from glass to air, means denser medium to rare medium. That time it will go away from normal. Here the normal is this and Q is the normal and our uh, the ray, emergent ray is QR is going away from normal. Means when you are taking a prism here or uh, some angle form, first angle form if we look here, first angle form if we look that angle form between the line OP and the normal. So, this angle is called angle of incidence, this one. Here it is written I1. I1 is the angle of incidence, this angle. Now, next one, when it will come from uh, air to glass, it will get two angles. This angle, angle between normal and refracted ray is the angle of refraction or R1 for the first surface. And the deviation produced is the delta 1 for the first phase. Now the ray of light is passing inside the prism and now it will hit to the second phase. When it will hit to the second phase, 
the angle between refracted ray and normal for second phase are two deviation produce delta two and the angle formed between emergent ray and the normal is called angle of emergence or i2 or some book is written e one means we got here six angles one angle angle of incidence two angle of refraction two angle of deviation for two phases and one is the angle of emergence means in case of rectangular glass block we got because two surfaces or two refracting surfaces are parallel to each other so we got i1 equal to i2 or i equal to e or angle of incidence equal to angle of emergence but now because it's a triangular surface or both the uh, refracting surface are inclined by a certain angle so they both are not equal now next thing to derive a relationship between these all so let to derive a relationship between angle of incidence angle of emergence angle of uh, refraction in the first surface angle of refraction in the second surface angle of deviation in the first angle of deviation in the second so let to come to their relationship so first thing if we look in the presence of uh, prism one light is is coming to towards normal again it is going away from normal or towards the base we can say but if we not use any prism this light ray op or incident ray op will go straight but because of the use of prism now it is going in the direction of qr so the angle formed between the actual path of incident ray this one and the path of emergent ray is the angle form between them is called angle of deviation so here we'll get the angle of deviation delta the angle between actual path of incident ray and the emergent ray now next thing to know the derivation it will take the first surface now for the first surface light is just going now from air to glass if it is going from air to glass means angle of incidence is more angle of refraction is less so to find angle of deviation produced by the first phase will get i1 minus r1 here you can see delta 1 equal to i1 minus r1 when it will go from now from glass to air that case angle of emergence is bigger angle of uh, refraction is here smaller because it's going from denser to rarer medium so we'll get for angle of deviation i2 minus r2 where i2 is angle of emergence r2 is the uh, angle between refracted ray and the normal in the second phase means or you can say also the angle of incidence through which uh, light rays is going from glass to the air now it will come to the uh, combination of these two what we'll get delta 1 plus delta 2 equal to i1 minus r1 plus i2 minus r2 but if we look here it's a if we look in the diagram m p q this one m p q this is a triangle and p m side is extended up to the point l means the angle form here outside the triangle is the exterior angle which angle q m l or l m q is the exterior angle and we know the sum of exterior angle is the total of the sum of two interior opposite angles means this delta 1 plus delta 2 equal to the whole deviation angle of deviation delta so what we got for delta what for delta as delta 1 plus delta 2 or delta 1 plus delta 2 means what will get delta 1 plus delta 2 delta 1 plus delta 2 equal to i1 plus r1 i1 I minus r1 plus i2 minus r2 so what we got in combination i1 plus i2 minus r1 plus r2 now it will come to this collateral collateral which one a b and 
cube a p n cube this one the polyhedral here if we look this side is a normal which one n q and n p also a normal means two angle here is 90 90 means total is 180 degree and we know some total of all the angles in the quadrilateral is 360 degrees so remaining angle this angle and this angle in the angle form at the point a an angle form at the point n these two total is 180 degree means what we got now because this sum of two angles are one sum of two angles is uh, 180 degree we got for the angle from at p point and q point so remaining two angle is 180 degree so p a q angle plus angle p a q plus angle angle p a q plus angle p and q is 180 degree this one so p a q equal to how do you get 180 degree minus p and q so next is when we'll take two relation we got now one we got delta equal to i1 plus i2 minus r1 plus r2 now another relation we got here that two angles p a q plus p and q equal to 180 degree now if we'll come to our this triangle which triangle p and q in triangle p and q angle in triangle P and Q, if we look here, angle P and Q, angle P and Q, the angle form at the vertex N, P and Q equal to R1 plus R2. From total of all the angles in the triangle is 180 degree, so 180 degree minus R1 plus R2. Or we can say R1 plus R2 plus P and Q equal to 180 degree. That means R1 plus R2 equal to 180 degree minus P and Q. But we got in our equation 2 that P A Q plus P and Q equal to 180 degree. So what we got P A Q equal to? P A Q equal to R1 plus R2. That means angle of prism is the sum of the two refractors angle of refraction forming two side two refracting surface of a prism so a equal to we got a is the angle of prism or refracting angle a is the angle of prism a equal to r1 plus r2 so in the relation delta equal to i1 plus i2 minus r1 plus r2 what we'll get delta equal to i1 plus i2 minus a or it will combine then we'll get if we'll combine, we'll get I1 plus I2 equal to A plus delta. I1 plus I2 equal to A plus delta means angle of incidence plus angle of emergence equal to angle of prism plus angle of deviation. So, now we got angle of deviation. So, on which factor this angle of deviation depends? Next thing to know. So, angle of de uh, deviation depends upon which factor. First thing to know, what is angle of deviation? Angle of deviation means the angle from the actual path of incident ray and the emergent ray. means when emergent is uh, taken backward and incident is taken forward so angle from is the angle of incidence sorry angle of deviation this angle of deviation depends first thing on the refractive index of prism different uh, material we can take and all the materials are having different refractive index and with the increase in refractive index speed of light decrease and with the decrease in refractive index speed of light increase so prism with higher refractive index produce greater deviation means the prism where refractive index is more deviation is and the prism of less refractive index has less deviation now next one dependence on angle of prism if we are using uh, as we have discussed the different type of prism is available depending upon the shape of the triangle so more the angle of prism more the deviation third one depends upon the wavelength of light means in my first part i have discussed it will go to my first video you'll able to know that when a ray of light is passing from one transparent to another 
frequency remain constant but the speed and wavelength change means a prism when it is uh, means when a ray of light is moving uh, uh, passing from one transparent medium to another how much will deviate that depending upon its wavelength all the uh, uh, that may be visible or invisible all the spec all the light rays are having different wavelength so with angle of deviation increases with the decrease in wavelength means the light having less wavelength having more deviation the light is have, the light having more wavelength having less deviation for that yeah the rare light which is having maximum uh, wavelength having least deviation howlet which is having least uh, wavelength having good deviation in if we compare v i b g y u r or the visible lights now next thing to know about the uh, it will come to the next part of our one the dependence of angle of incidence means when angle of incidence we are changing the angle of deviation increase decrease or it remains same that one will, we are going to discuss here if we look here whenever we are using or we are increasing the angle of incidence for some angle of incidence this angle of deviation decrease and it will come to a point or the position after it will increase means this position in the graph if we look this position is the minimum deviation this position is called the position of minimum deviation or minimum deviation position and the angle for which we will get this position this is called angle of minimum deviation or minimum angle of deviation so in this time when minimum deviation takes place in a prism that time the refracted ray will remain parallel to the base so when both these are remain parallel that time i1 or angle of incidence i2 or angle of emergence both will be equal to each other when both are equal to each other i1 plus i2 equal to a plus delta means delta equal to what will get i1 plus i2 equal to a plus delta that means delta equal to i1 plus i2 minus a here i1 and i2 both are equal that means delta minimum or angle of minimum deviation equal to 2i minus a because i1 equal to i2 the sum total is double of one angle so 2i minus a will get the minimum deviation and minimum deviation angle is different for different type of medium. now next thing is the application of this refract means whenever we look from a rarer medium from air to glass air to water air to diamond then what are the changes we'll get in the height that one we are going to discuss here so if we look application of refraction of light you, you might have observed when we are giving our uh, leg inside water it will feel that is a little bit short when you are looking to a stick inside water you will feel that you will observe that it is little bit bent coin it will keep inside water and you look you will feel that is a little bit off that all thing the application of refractive index the first thing we have to know is the real depth and apparent depth real depth means the actual distance means where the particular coin is placed to the surface of water what is the actual height that is the real depth but when we are looking from a rarer medium means where the speed of light is more to a denser medium where the speed of light is less because of refraction the height that height part will observe is called the apparent depth so one is the real depth one is apparent depth and always apparent depth value is less in compared to real depth if we look here if we look here one object o inside water and observer in the air this line this line is the straight line because always when we are looking to any object in a transparent medium straight there is no refraction because angle of incidence is zero and sin i by sin r if we take i zero then r also zero I mean this is the actual height or real depth or real height from n point to o point is the actual height or actual depth or real depth which is denoted by this letter capital d now observer in the air 
light rays from O point strike or incident to the boundary at the point P. After striking to the boundary or uh, separating surface, that will go away from normal because it is going from water to air. So we will get here certain thing loop. This is the normal. This line is the normal. Which line is the normal? This line is the normal. And this one the straight line. Since both are parallel to each other. And two parallel line with one intersection line it will get. This is the intersecting line. So we will get certain angles here. This angle and this one. The angle form at the vertex P and the angle form at the vertex I is this one vertex I. These two angles are equal to each other. These two angles are equal to each other. If we look here, angle form at the vertex P and the angle form at the vertex I, these two are equal because both are corresponding angles. And if we take again, these two lines are parallel to each other and this is the intersecting line, this line. P O is the intersecting line. So we'll get again two angles. One angle at the point, this one. This angle and one more angle at the O point, this angle. These two are equal to each other because both are alternate angles. So we got angle P, angle P, I, N equal to angle of incident I and angle N, O, P as the R. So if we take two triangle now, one triangle N, I, P, sin I, what will get for sin I? For sin I will get, look, in this part if we look here, sin refractive index, we know the formula is sin I by sin R. For sin I, what will get? In triangle, in triangle, uh, P n i sin i equal to P n hypotenuse uh, P n perpendicular by P i or i P as the hypotenuse or angle R sin R if we look in triangle n o P or P n o will get P by h again P P n or angle R perpendicular is this P n P n and hypotenuse is P o. So Pn by OP or Pn by PO. What we will get when we will combine? Get P and Pn same cancel. So OP by IP. When P point is very very close to N or P is coincide with N or it will come very near to N, we will not able to differentiate these two points. That time we will get as the OP as ON and ips in or we can say on by in so refractive index what we got on on is the actual depth or real depth on is the real depth and in is the apparent depth so real depth by apparent depth is the refractive and the difference between these two if we look this part this is the difference between real depth and apparent depth, this part. So this difference between real depth and apparent depth is the shift. So now we'll discuss about the shift on which factor it depends. We'll come to the shift. Shift is the difference between real depth and apparent depth. So shift, uh, to know about the shift, we have to know the real depth, we have to know the apparent depth and how much it will write off that depends upon some factor. First factor if we look, it depends upon refractive index of a medium. The refractive index, more it will write. Less the refractive index, less it will write. Means it will compare between diamond and glass. Inside the diamond, the shift is more because diamond having more refractive index compared to glass. Second one, it depends upon thickness of medium. Means more the thicker medium more the shift depending upon the wavelength means shift decreases with the increase in wavelength that means shift for red color is least 
and shift for violet color is maximum because shift decreases with the increase in wavelength or shift increases with the decrease in wavelength. So if we we'll come here, the stick example or pencil one, if we we'll keep inside a glass of water or a bottle of water, we'll get a bending of stick or bending of pencil. Here you can see the actual point is here, but it will observe here because of refraction of light. Here the observer and the air and object inside water. So because of refraction, this this is the actual height or actual or real depth you can see. But for us, this is the apparent depth. Means real depth by apparent depth, we'll able to know about the refractivity. So next one, in our atmosphere or in our daily life, what are the effects of this refraction? First one, if we look, when we we'll, uh, look from air to inside a swimming pool, always we'll feel that uh, it is little bit off, the surface little bit off, right, because of refraction. And because, why it occurs? Because we are in the air and water, uh, light is going from air to water. Or we can say uh, one is denser medium, one is airer medium. Second one, if we look, when we'll put a pencil inside water or if we'll put a stick inside water, we'll feel that it is a little bit bent. We'll observe to this diagram here, a little bit bent because of refraction. Third one, we'll take here, third case, when a coin is placed, when a coin is placed inside uh, water, it appears to us a little bit right. The same one, when we'll put our leg inside water, we will feel that it is short because of this refraction. And in our uh, atmosphere, we'll get a twinkling of stars because when the light is coming from a star or from a uh, very large distance, that time due to multiple refraction, is we'll feel that sometimes stars are near and sometimes far because of this refraction. And another one, if we we'll look here, the illusion. Because in uh, our desert area, there is a mirage formation. Means uh, we will feel that the presence of water, but it is not because of the refraction and looming. Looming means in the extremely cold area, we will feel the seep is little bit off from the surface, which is actually not. And this all because of another factor, total internal reflection, what we are going to discuss in our third video. And also, when we we'll keep a glass block, when we we'll keep or we we'll look from a glass slab to a letter written in different color, we'll get some letter right more, some light letter right less because sieve depends upon the wavelength. So this is about the application of refraction. This is about the uh, refraction through a rectangular, uh, a refraction through a triangular prism. In the third part, we'll discuss what is the total internal reflection. Up to this, we have discussed about the refraction. But next video, because when the ray of light will pass from denser to the other medium, but a reflection will take place, no refraction will take place. That you have to subscribe my channel to get some more videos, more updates, and also you have to like the video if you feel it is useful for you. Thank you.